Good afternoon everyone, maupay nga kulog pa aton nga tanan. This is Bati Yupi Takloban and this program is entitled Pasundayag. For this afternoon's Pasundayag, we are collaborating with the Division of Humanities which spearheads Aghat Arte, the Arts Month celebration in Yupi Takloban. Today we are joined by Professor Jessa Amarilie who will read and discuss with us a poem. Ma'am Jessa, maupay nga kulog. Maupay nga kulog, Mars. Maupay nga kulog pa atong mga mamarati. Uh, can you first give us an idea about the poem? An akon babasahon nga poem. Uh, the poem I'm about to read, it's a waray poem. It's a siday. It's entitled Testigo by Vicente Soria de Vera. Um, Vicente or Jojo Soria de Vera was a writing fellow in the 1987 Siliman National Writers' Workshop and the 1988 UP National Writers' Workshop. He is from Palo, Leyte. Uh, he writes poems and short stories. His works ha- have been published in several national and international publications. Um, he took up fine arts in the College of Fine Arts at UP Diliman and he currently edits the online arts review magazine, Discurso.com. Now I'm reading uh, Testigo ni Vicente Soria de Vera. Haharayo nga pulong, bisan marampag hadubhan, ang bagma kasasala mo. Habagting hanaksimod, ako lagihapon ang mapa inubsanon, ako. Ako ang madarahog nga say na angay makigbisog halawudhan kaaraudan. Kay ikaw ang naghalad. Ikaw ang kinmarawat hanak ka maisog nga malunod ang nga tanan nga pagusga. O gugma. Hahalipot nga pulong. Bisan buong. Bisan. Testigo ni Vicente Soria de Vera. And now I'm reading the English translation of the Sea Day. In the farthest words, even though my heart knows full well how dreadfully you have sinned, in the words of my mouth, I will be the humble one. I, I be the sinner, the one to face bravely the ocean of shame. You are the faithful one, the one who bore my cruelty, and thus are drowned all judgment, even love. In the briefest speech, I accept, though broken, yes. Uh, that English translation, by the way, is from Sa Atong Dila, an introduction to Visayan literature by Professor Emeritus Merli Alunan. This feels like a really intense and intriguing poem. I'm curious, why why did you choose this poem uh, specifically? Um, this poem, I, I must say, is is my favorite sea day. I like it first uh, for its brevity. Uh, it's it's composed of, of two stanzas. Mm-hmm. The first stanza you have there six six lines, and the second stanza has one line. Uh, and is it uncommon for poems to have this sort of structure? Um, well, uh, traditional poems or poems that conform to the traditional structure, they follow a certain uh, meter, a certain mm-hmm. rhyming scheme. Um, but this poem um, follows no specific uh, rhyming scheme. It's written in free verse. Yeah. Yes, uh, like I said earlier, it has uh, the, the first stanza has six lines, while the second stanza has only one line. Right, um, but it's also not entirely random, right? Uh, you, in a way, there's some sort of rhetorical device being employed here. Uh, when uh, we talk about, for example, how the first phrase, "Haharayo nga pulong." is echoed by the last one so there's some in a way poetics to to structuring the the speech and it's a way of coming full circle 
right? So, like you said, there's a there, it has its own rhythm, uh, even though it is in free verse. Yes, that that is correct, Mars. It has an intended structure. Right, and uh, uh, what's your impression about the persona, by the way? All right. Uh, well, first of all, um, well, way back in college, in, in one of my literature classes, we had this professor who um, told us that w when you r when you read a poem, mm. um, you treat it as if it's a conversation between two people. So if uh, it's a conversation between two people, there's someone talking and the person that person is addressing yeah. or talking to. Um, in literature, we call that, that voice, the person talking in the poem, the persona or the speaker. Mm. Um, in this case, in the poem, it's clear really that the persona is, is, is talking to, to someone. But, but, but what is their conversation about? What is this poem about? What is it essentially about? Yeah. Um, you said earlier that um, in terms of structure, mm -hmm. the, the, the poem follows a, a, certain, a certain pattern. It starts with harayung apulong. That's how the first stanza starts, and the second stanza starts hahalipot na pulong, and yeah. th that's what makes one of the things that make um, the poem interesting. Mm. Um, so you see, so so if we analyze it, the first stanza, the six lines, haharayung pulong. So if I want to to say this. With more words, this is how I'll say it. Yeah. Whatever that thing that the persona is trying to impart to, to the person he or she is talking to, and in the second stanza, so if I say it with less words, um, this is how I'll say it. Hahalipot mm -hmm. pulong bisan boong bisan. Right, and I also think that it would have, in a way, a different effect if we switch the stanzas, right? Like if he, he if he began instead with hahalipot nga pulong bisan buong bisan, that would have made it more vague. But because it comes at the end, and the reader now has an, has knowledge about you know what the persona is saying, so in a way that that last stanza, that second stanza is just a clincher. Yeah, that's right. It's a clincher. Yeah. It's a one line statement concluding mm -hmm. everything. But still powerful. Indeed. Yeah. Um, in terms of the tenor of, of the person speaking, I have the impression that the person is in pain, and I'm not sure. Do you think there is anger as well? All right. Let, let's try to look closer at the words. You see, Mars, um, di ba kun nagbabasa kita hin sida, eh, nagbabasa kita hin literary text. Um, the first thing to do actually is not to figure out what the metaphor is yeah. or what what yeah the deep or the, we say the deeper meaning mm. of, of the text we first understand it literally right the first level reading yes that is correct but the first reading uh, I, I think it's well, it's not that hard to, mm -hmm. to understand the poem. We are familiar with the words. Yeah. We know what the words mean. So, ahara yung apulong, like I said, um, this is how the, the, the persona starts the poem. Bisan marampag hadughan, translated to English uh, in this translation, um, in sa atong dila, even though my heart knows full well, and pag makasasala mo yeah. so what's going on here um, it seems that someone mm -hmm. um, based on the tenor of, of the persona um, it's it's the person he or she is talking to has committed a sinful act yeah do you agree right yeah so 
um, I can feel the, the poignancy in, in the words, right? I'm just not exactly sure if it's there's also anger. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I think I'm also getting the sense of, of, of anger, not only in, in the content, um, in, in saying that you have, um, like, uh, you have committed a sin against me or you have offended me um, profoundly, but I guess there's also something to, to the sound. The, the, the aesthetics of the, of the words, the speech sounds with the G's and the... When I hear those speech sounds, these are rather harsh sounds, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, you have a lot of, of um, velar sounds mm-hmm. there. And uh, I'm not exactly sure if it was the intention of the author to choose these words specifically to, in a way, uh, evoke a right. harsh emotion. Well, that, that that's a, a really valid point, Mars. So let me just uh, read the words with the strong G, right. a gaga sound. Um, Bisan marampag mm-hmm. hadughan an pagma kasasala mo yeah. habag ting hanaksimud ako lagi hapun an mapainobsanon ako an madarahog. Yeah. Um, you also notice the M, yeah. the M sounds. And that's what makes the the, the poem, the lines mm-hmm. transition smoothly, right? Nasay na angay makigbisog halawud han kaaraudan kay ikaw ang naghalad ikaw ang kinmarawat han ak kamaisog nga malunod ang yatanan nga pagusga ugugma. Right. Even towards the end of this first stanza, you still have those G's, like pagusga and, and gugma. And, well, one could say that, you know, well, naturally in the Warai language, there's really just a lot of, of Gs <laughs> right, or Ks right. or Velar sounds. So, that's my impression, though. It could be that the, the author was not necessarily um, intentionally using these speech sounds, but in a way, that's the effect it has on me. But I must say that w- when you write poetry, um, you, you consider the sounds the the words will make because yeah. ultimately poetry should be read aloud right mm-hmm. for for the reader to fully appreciate its its beauty its, its aesthetics yeah. right because it's one thing reading reading the poem silently for for its meaning yeah. and it's another level you know reading the poetry aloud to, to know how how it sounds mm-hmm. cuz poetry ultimately is about it's, sounds, right? It's aside it's from it, oral. yeah, being about metaphor, right? Yeah. So um, there's that dynamics to it, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, the the feeling, the emotion uh, evoked in, in in the poem, and how that emotion may be coming from both the the form and uh, the content, mm-hmm. and how in a way form and content. Uh, interact to, to produce particular effects. Ultimately, we're gonna ask the question, then what is the poem telling us? What is its meaning? Earlier I said, um, uh, one way to understanding it is treating it as a conversation between two people. Like the persona um, is addressing this other person. The persona is willing to take... This other person seems to have sinned and that the persona is willing to take the blame for that sin but as to what particular sin or transgression it is we are not sure and that's one or another beauty of the poem it's ambiguity the 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 poem is open to interpretation to a lot of interpretations what do you think it seems like a really grave sin right for mm-hmm. for this persona to be talking like this i like i'm i'm a little clueless but I, well it could be of course something unique to lovers it could be that kind of problem it could it be about infidelity could it mm-hmm. be about you know something that would break one's trust um i think i'm sort of like uh, getting that idea from uh buong like how something is buong could this poem be about self-sacrifice, Mars? Hmm. Yes, uh, I can. I can see that. Um, 
in a way sacrificing one's reputation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we get that from the phrase "lawudhan kaaraudan," the ocean of shame. Mm-hmm. And in a way, actually, I'm interested as well in how that may develop into a metaphor because it also resonates with the idea of malunud. So there's some sort of yeah. metaphor of, of water and drowning mm-hmm. and how, you know, the lawud is open sea. And yeah, in right. a way, you're vulnerable when you're um, there in, in that space. So, kaaraudan, shame, self-sacrifice in the sense that, like you said, the persona is um, accepting the blame. But right. blame for what? That's what is ambiguous, yeah, that, right? Exactly. We, we don't know exactly what that sinful act yeah. is. Uh, but, but what's the most intriguing probably is the last line. Hahalipot nga pulong, bisan buong, bisan. That's, for me, that line is the most intriguing part of the, of the poem. Mm-hmm. Um, the persona sounds like he or she is coming to terms with the situation. There's a sense of acceptance, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. That's the word, acceptance. Mm-hmm. Bisan buong, even though broken. But what is broken here? What is buong? Exactly. And what is that sin? Ano ito yung sala, Mars? Ano ito yung buong? Hmm. Nga bisan buong, kakarauton? Hmm. Uh, when we think about the idea of brokenness, of what, what is buong, we wonder what things do we describe as buong? Well, of course, more commonly, we would describe a mirror as broken, right? Something that's fragile. But the author here is speaking of something abstract. So what are ideas we usually describe as broken? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of trust, for example. Or... Well, reputation. Right, and, and reputation would sound more, I guess, it, it, it probably is what the poem is about, in a way. Because you have hints like, um, ka'araudan. When you speak about shame, it's really about face and the need to save face. And when, when you have someone whose reputation is broken, you're also involved there now. Because when you are close to someone, you are associated in a way, mm-hmm. you share the shame. Right, right. And one more thing that is intriguing about the poem it's, is its title, the Stigo. Why is the poem entitled Testigo? And who is this Testigo? Uh, probably it's easy to think that the Testigo would be the persona because um, we are so uh, focused on the persona when we talk about um, poems. But that could also be is it the person being addressed or in a way it could be us? It could be the reader, right? And so now the, the poem reaches another level, another dimension. Uh, yeah. We, as readers, we are becoming witness to this utterance of the persona, which it, his his or her rant or tirade and... Or uh, actually a declaration of love, perhaps? In a very um, unconventional way, mm-hmm. right? It's not the usual declaration where you speak um, sweet words, <laughs> right? In a way, this is about sacrifice. It's very profound and, and intense. And that's really interesting to think that the reader now has become part of, right. of, of the poem. That's when the poem becomes... Well, metatextual? Metatextual, that... intersubjective. Yeah. Right? Now it involves us. That just all the more, I guess, cements the idea that poetry does not end in the printed text right and, and and see how a short text like this is so compact yet brief captures these meanings right yeah from from the title down to to the last line hahalipot nga pulong bisan buong bisan and to express powerful emotions like the one which the persona is evoking in, in this poem, could it be that it is poetry and not everyday language through which we could be articulate? Right, right. You have a point there, Mars. That actually answers the question, why read and write poetry? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, when you can say something directly, why express it through a poem? Because there's beauty in indirectness. I mean, it indirectly saying something to someone has sometimes more impact uh, than, than saying it directly to that person. I just hope that we can talk more about the poetry here in Eastern Visayas because we have um, many good poems. This this one poem by by Vicente Soria de Vera, Testigo, is just one of the many sidae uh, that we have in the region. And I look forward to, to more opportunities where we can talk about them. Well, first read them, perform them, and talk about them. The discourse on poetry, on literature, shall continue. Absolutely. <laughs>